want to talk about the classic mistake you want to make with waterfalls? <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. You sure? Because what we tell everybody when we're going to visit somebody's house for the first time and look at where we might put a waterfall, we look at what the surrounding grade is like, and we don't want to make a volcano in the backyard, right? First thing Brian said was, <laughs> well, that's take, enough. Let's take the, no, 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 no. <laughs> let's take the bile falls. <laughs> I did not <laughs> say that high. You did. <laughs> You're like, I would go the biggest waterfall. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquascape and I am here in Hereford, Hereford, somebody's Ford, Arizona. <laughs> and I'm out here with my good friends, Ralph Bizad, Pondscapes AZ, Jack Harju, Atlantis Water Gardens. They've been out here for a week already, so I've got them at probably about 60% <laughs> because you, they, I they think busted be... their butts building a pretty epic water feature last week. I'm not always impressed, but that thing was awesome. You guys did a killer job. What were some of the biggest obstacles out there? It Ralph. <laughs> Ralph. Jack's attitude. <laughs> Jack's attitude. <laughs> so we're not going to have any of that on this project, no. right? No, no, no. no, no. Uh, you know what was so cool about that job is we don't get to do front yard water features all that often. Having the opportunity where Lee's just like, okay, whatever you guys want. She literally had no idea what we were right. going to build out there and it turned out amazing. And we were dealing with the same thing here with Keith. He's like, yeah, build whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be super cool. So the three of us out here, I think kind of mixing it up is going to create uh, It an seems awesome this uh, new trend with our customers and kind of build with whatever you, whatever you want is becoming a little bit more common. Like, yeah. I mean, only thing you really need is a big checkbook. That's it. <laughs> 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 so Ralph, how did this come to be? Because this is kind of a unique story. Keith, the homeowner, is actually wanting to become one of us. Yeah. One, you know. How cool is that? Yeah. So he's an IT guy, and I guess he's uh, ready to make a change in his life and get out and uh, start playing with rocks and digging holes. And uh, he did an awesome job on the two features in his. You're right. I mean, yeah, for his first two features, it's light years ahead of where some guys have been doing for their entire lifetime, right? <laughs> Yeah. So he's definitely down the right path here. It looks amazing. Why don't we talk a little bit about what we're going to build here? You want to just kind of run us through the, the design real quick? Sure. Awesome. All right, so we've got a total blank canvas, and we have a 30 by 50 liner. So we can do whatever we want. When we came out here originally... Could we do a 100-foot pond? Sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> we got plenty of tape. When I originally came out here a few months ago, they are going off of vision of Lee's pond in her backyard and love that concept. So we kind of laid that out, what that might look like. Got your input, Jack's input, and we've made a few changes, and I think it's gonna be that much better. So Keith is really open to whatever we wanna do, and his wife is just make it look beautiful. So we're gonna get out here and do something really cool. One thing that the way this project worked out, it was the timeline was getting thin because we had it scheduled and uh, things were uh, not working out with his schedule. So I was originally gonna come out and build this block retaining wall. He he had to make that happen just because we weren't sure if we were going to do this project, but he didn't want to miss out on the opportunity to have you, Jack, out here, and we've got a surprise for him here in a couple months, and we're just going to make this thing awesome. Awesome. So roughly what we have an 18 by what? Uh, like an 18 by 20 pond. 18 by 20 pond, so about 18 feet from here to there, 20 feet from here to here, an intake bay that's going to go in over here with the hope of getting some type of bridge coming over the transition from the the pond to the intake bay maybe some stone steps leading up to that bridge to a secret kind of meditation garden sitting underneath the canopy of this tree which will look much more appealing when there's leaves back on it but that'll look incredible and then we've got about a three foot you want to talk about the classic mistake you want to make with waterfalls no, I'm good. I'm good. You sure? Because what we tell everybody when we're going to visit somebody's house for the first time and look at where we might put a waterfall, we look at what the surrounding grade is like, and we don't want to make a volcano in the backyard, right? First thing Brian said was, let's <laughs> well, that's take, enough. Let's take the, no, 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 let's take the bile falls. <laughs> I did not say that high. You did. <laughs> You're like, I would go the biggest waterfall. <laughs> 
which I get it. So we have a backdrop here with an existing, this is what they use for fencing in Arizona, because I think regular fencing melts in the sun. <laughs> so the reason Keith had to put this wall in here is completely structural. We want to make sure that we're not putting any pressure on this wall. So he actually built this wall, rebar, concrete inside of it, so it's nice and sturdy. We're going to go a little bit higher, okay? You you do agree like, that the you know, waterfall... So you wanted to go here. I would like to go well, up to here. Go here. We're going to go here. I would like to go all the way up here. It's not going to happen. But we're going to compromise and come in like here. No, stop cheating on me. <laughs> so we're going to take the biofalls. We're going to set it out probably a, a good four or five feet away from here. And one of the things that we talked about was we hate seeing the start of the waterfall. Right? Yep. And the way we're going to help avoid that is we're going to take and turn this this way. We're going to have it where it's this high. It's going to fall out to a small, shallow pooling area, which is going to come this way. And that's going to give us the opportunity to then take the waterfall where it's going towards the house and completely make that invisible. So there'll be some sort of boulder in front of here where you won't see where the water source is coming from. And I can see like some aquatic plants and stuff yeah. here. But giving that illusion where we're hiding the biofall, which is an important component away from the viewing area, I think that's going to be a great start to the waterfall. Yeah. Anytime you can avoid having to build the waterfall coming out of this, try to do it. It just means bringing soil almost all the way up to the top. Instead of it being the shape of a biofalls, it'll ultimately have the shape of a big upper pool in here, which will look so much more natural and be very appealing looking from the kind of meditation garden space over in here. So really next step, Jack, is hook up some plumbing, do some digging, and hopefully by the end of the day, we've got fabric liner in this we, thing. We might have one challenge here. Caliche is pretty common in this area, and Keith said anytime he plants a tree, he hits a bunch of it. That stuff's almost like concrete. So I'm hoping we don't get inundated with it because that machine's gonna be working overtime to get this hole in. <laughs> we've dealt with it before. We have. And that, that's why you're here. <laughs> so smooth for <laughs> for the first like maybe 20 minutes. We got our biofall set. We ran into some really, really nice soil. And then we hit this stuff, which I think they call caliche. It's just solid rock. And you can see down there by Jack, there's just a big layer of it all the way through the pond. So the challenge is, is when you're digging it, it just like, it's a couple inches, not even a quarter inch at a time. And it just breaks up, breaks up, breaks up. And eventually you get down into like a sandy layer down below, but it is a pain. So we'll just keep muscling through that stuff. Hopefully we stick to our goal and get that liner and stuff installed by the end of the day. If we can get fabric liner installed by the end of the day, tomorrow we'll start working on waterfall and start getting some of the rocks in the pond. And I think we're out of here, maybe ahead of schedule, which would be awesome.
finally get to the bottom of this excavation. I will say I heard you say something earlier today and it is so important to kind of understand the type of soil conditions that you're digging in when doing this. If you came out here unprepared, let's say you had a different type of bucket and didn't have those tiger teeth, we couldn't dig this. We just couldn't. So thank God we had those. We're running into one of the big obstacles now is how to get rid of all this stuff. So we're getting, I don't know if you guys can see this, but if you come over here, you can really see the different layers. This is good stuff, bad, good, bad. <laughs> So a good two feet of bad soil has to come out of here. And uh, you can't use it up in your berms. You can't use it anywhere out on the property because nothing will grow in it. So we gotta get all of that out of here. So we'll just get this finished, cleaned up. We got a couple of loose piles of rock and gravel down here. I think we're ready for some sand. We're definitely gonna wanna throw sand over the whole bottom of this to give it a nice cushion. And then uh, of course our rock pad. So we're gonna put a lot of padding down. Then we get our rock in here. We're gonna rock in this section of the pond. Then we'll fold our liner back once we get that stuff out of here here and finish digging the rest of it because right now it has a pretty undesirable shape it's just ugly <laughs> here's the shape of the pond hitting that caliche today, we still got a ton done on this pond. So I think one of the most important things when you're starting to rock in your pond is really try to maintain that shape. You know, we spend so much time laying it out to have these really neat curves and peninsulas and stuff that come in. And when you start rocking it, you can really lose that quick. So if you see here, there's kind of this peninsula that comes out right in here. And what would happen is if I took these rocks and brought them all the way in to this wall right here, I'm either gonna stack up on top of this, which is gonna look weird. More often than not, you'd bring this rock in here and instead of stacking on top, you end up digging this out, losing that peninsula. We don't wanna lose that peninsula. So what we did is we set these rocks out a good two to three feet. We couldn't dig shelves in this caliche. There was no possible way. So we're basically creating shelves with the rocks. So we set it out to feet we'll backfill all of this with gravel we use a lot of gravel when we do this but the one thing that's nice about arizona is gravel is pretty dang cheap so we'll backfill all of this with gravel giving us a super solid nice base to set a giant beautiful rock out of this peninsula we always say big rocks on the curves that go in towards the pond little rocks on the curves that go away that'll help accentuate those curves that much more if you look over here the same thing's going to happen this is going to be a big peninsula right here we set these guys out a little further we'll get another big rock that sits right up in here big rock over there big rock here and then in here we'll try to keep these nice and tight this is where the patio the future patio is going to come in and so it'll be deep water right off of this concave curve over here that's a great explanation brian i think we've gotten enough done for day one what do you think yeah day one uh i would call it a wrap it's a wrap see you tomorrow